Hi, my name is Andrew Reader, and I'll be presenting AI for PET. So I'll start off by looking at the PET pipeline. Um, this is a, a conventional um, data acquisition from a PET scanner. Here I've got a, a simulation of an FDG distribution inside the scanner. And what we get typically are sinograms or projections that look a little bit like this Poisson distributed noisy case shown here. Then what is typically involved is the need to model um, scatter, randoms, effects of attenuation and normalization in order to get a set of sinograms which can then be put into the image reconstruction algorithm. And this could be um, sort of a direct method like filtered back projection or more commonly iterative methods to get a reconstructed image. And then often after that, there'll be some post-processing that is done such as denoising, partial volume correction, whatever it might be. And finally, there'd be the endpoint image analysis, like finding SUVs or kinetic parametric maps or some kind of detection task that is done. And what I'll be doing in this talk is looking at um, four of these stages where we can put AI into the process in order to do better than conventional methods. So I'll be looking at them in the following order. I'll be looking at the post-processing as the first one, second reconstruction examples, third looking at processing and finally looking at image analysis. So I'll start off by looking at post-processing. Now in this slide I just want to convey the simplicity of a core building block behind a lot of AI methods used in PET um, and the core building block is that of convolution um, which is used in convolutional neural networks such as CNNs. So here I'm showing the case of a noisy simulated 2D slice and what I'm doing here is estimating a 5x5 five five 2D kernel in order to smooth that image, as shown by this animation here. The convolution process is basically taking a weighted um, average of surrounding neighborhood values in the input to, to deliver the output value. What we do with the uh, CNN approach, or the AI paradigm in general, is use knowledge of what the ground truth would be. And so we find the kernel, which when convolved with that noisy image, best matches by a mean square error loss function best matches the ground truth. And uh, so here this is just a simulation and therefore we have access to the ground truth and just one simple uh, pair of training examples were used to find that simple uh, 2D mapping. But it's a very general concept and so here I'm showing the case of putting in a blurred image now, training a convolution kernel, a 5x5 kernel in order to get an output which best matches the ground truth. And you can see here that the kernel that's been learned now includes negatives, effectively doing a kind of deconvolution in order to produce this uh, improved quality output. Of course, it doesn't perfectly match because it's only one simple kernel, but it gets uh, a lot closer, obviously, compared to the input image. So let's build up some complexity now and turn also to real 3D PET data from the MMR scanner. Um, and what I've got here is a mapping that um, is taking a low count uh, reconstructed image and putting that through um, a series, a cascade of convolutional layers. So here, first of all, I take this image, I'm representing it here by this black line. And what we're doing with this blue arrow is doing 32 um, different kernels that are being learned, um, five by five by five 3D kernels that are being learned with a, a simple activation after them in order to generate a whole bank of feature maps here. So this is just a set of convolutional outputs from that input. Um, and then a, another uh, bank of feature maps are learned by learning basically um, three by three by three size kernels this time, again, 32 of them, but they all operate now on uh, 32 inputs. So they're multi-channel kernels. And then at the end here, uh, we just have a simple kind of gluing together one by one by one kernel, just a weighted collection of those feature maps. And the goal is we train up all of those kernel parameters with biases as well in order to get from the low count input to uh, the high quality target. And this was about a factor of uh, 10 uh, higher counts. And you can see that the prediction has actually uh, turned out reasonably well. And in fact, just to reveal what was going on, also this uh, CNN took um, as one of its inputs uh, the T1 weighted MR image, and that's being concatenated with the input um, at, at the front end there of the CNN. Only two training pairs were used, so very low complexity mapping, although we did train up here 44,000 uh, parameters. 
So this is the case of going from low count or low dose or short time acquisitions to try and mimic um, higher count acquisitions or higher dose, um, higher, injected, higher injected dose. So taking this concept a bit further, this is the method of Georg Schramm where they not only looked at trying to improve um, the level of counts in the image, but also to go from a standard OSCM PET reconstruction to try and map it to um, an MR-guided, anatomically-guided PET reconstruction, a MAP-EM method. This is using the so-called Bauscher prior, which uses uh, the MR information. So here, um, they take uh, the OSCM standard 3D um, image input, do some convolutions on it, and likewise for the MR, they concatenate those feature maps, run them through a whole long cascade, about eight layers here, cascade of uh, convolutional layers. Uh, here they're using a prelude activation after each of those convolutions, glue them all together. These are all learned based on, uh, I think it was 26 training data sets, two different tracers, two different scanners, so they do the reconstructions with OSCM and then the anatomically guided reconstructions, learn all of those kernels, all of those uh, biases as well, and uh, seek to attain that desired output from the input. Um, and they also did it in such a way that um, only the difference between the input and output uh, was being learned. So this is a residual convolutional neural network where it just learns what is the difference, therefore what is it that we need to add on uh, to the input um, in order to get the output. So um, they gained a massive acceleration um, because um, what they're doing now is just one uh, CNN to go from uh, the standard OSCM to the MR guided reconstruction, whereas normally such a process, such a MR guided reconstruction would take uh, tens of minutes at least on a CPU. Whereas on a CPU here, they could uh, do this in a minute or one second roughly on a GPU. So huge acceleration there. Uh, impressively, uh, they also demonstrated it by testing it on a different radio tracer. So this is F18 FET uh, used for oncology imaging. Here we've got a test subject with an abnormality here. Um, they put the T1 weighted image um, into the CNN as well. And at the output, you can see the abnormality is still there, and um, what they get in the MR-guided predicted output is a result that looks uh, remarkably close to the genuinely um, reconstructed uh, MR-guided reconstruction. Okay, so now let's turn our attention um, to the process of image reconstruction itself. First of all, let's look at direct methods. And what I want to point out, first of all, is that a very well-known direct method, filtered back projection, can itself be perceived as a cascade of mappings and therefore a deep uh, neural network. So let's take a look at that. Well, what we can do is say, here's an input sinogram containing different rows. And what we can do is convolve each one of those rows with, with a convolution kernel and then back project to do a filtered back projection to get the result. And in fact, that's exactly what Floyd did back in the early 1990s, some of the very early work for image reconstruction in emission tomography. This was for SPECT. And uh, what he did was uh, basically use uh, examples of point sources and their sinograms, and then trained up one single large convolution kernel that could be used for all of the angles, all of the rows of the sinogram, in order to convolve them such that when they're back projected, we get uh, the reconstructed image here. Um, so here now, I'm just going to show a more modern day example of that early work uh, from Floyd. First of all, just showing here, just out of interest, that the filtered back projection process itself can also be considered as a Fourier transform of each row of the sinogram, ramp filter, inverse Fourier transform, and then a back projection of each row of the uh, sinogram. Um, but what we can do is not just learn the single kernel or ramp filter like we did uh, with the method of Floyd, but we can have a go at learning the entire mapping from the sinogram to the image. And that's effectively what uh, this up-to-date example of Hagstrom um, is doing, where they take uh, an input sinogram and they use a whole cascade, a whole uh, series of convolutional mappings where what they're doing at the same time, though, is using this concept of stride, which leads to spatial downsampling. So that means when you move your convolution kernel around, you just skip um, projection bins each time you do the convolution. And what that will do is give a smaller and smaller sized output for each of these convolutional layers. 
But wanting to preserve information, because we're trying to transform it to another domain, a latent space, uh, what you do instead is increase the number of um, convolution kernels that are learned. So we're going from a sinogram description to, if you like, a, a latent space or a feature map-based description, where we need a lot of these feature maps in order to be sure that we're capturing all the salient information from the sinogram. Once we're in that latent space, we can then uh, decode it. Um, for example, decode that information into the form of an image. And so you need to upsample from that latent space because it's right, quite compact spatially. Upsample and get a reconstructed image. They used 200,000 uh, 2D uh, training data pairs. That's example ground truths along with their sinograms. And so had to train up 60 million parameters for the entirety of this convolutional encoder, decoder, CED mapping. Um, so they demonstrated lower noise compared to OSCM reconstruction. And of course, being a non-iterative method, they go from input to output in a time frame that is far more rapid than conventional iterative reconstruction like OSCM. Okay, let's take a look now at how AI can, can help iterative reconstruction. The example I've just shown from Hagstrom, that's good for the case of a 2D sinogram, but if you want to get into fully 3D reconstruction, um, we're going to need some of these um, methods that I'll be covering next. So conventional uh, iterative reconstruction in PET, shown here for the case of 2D, is that you have some initial image, you run it into, put it into this EM update, which is basically a forward projection, of your current image comparison with the measured data, back project that, that ratio of the two basically, and then multiply and then use a the sensitivity image. So that's this so-called EM update. You just keep applying that same operation multiple times to get a reconstructed image. But of course, this is a noisy image and that's where we need some way of compensating for noise and that's where AI can help. But conventionally, what was done, or what is still done, are MAP-EM methods, a bit like that anatomically guided reconstruction that I mentioned earlier. And so what happens with MAP-EM compared to MLEM is that any given, at any given update, um, not only do you do the EM update, but you also do effectively a denoising of your current image estimate. Then you join the two together in this kind of fusion step to give, to give a kind of denoised update that's accounted for the projection data as well as your prior information in that denoising step. It's just that our priors used in these MAP-EM reconstructions are not guaranteed at all, of course, to be uh, the best ones possible. And that's where maybe AI can indeed uh, be used to try and learn the best kind of denoising, in other words, the best prior information to use for that denoising step. Let's see how that's done then. So here's uh, the key to it is using very high quality reference data. Now, for the case of simulation, you know the high quality reference, you've got the ground truth. But what's often done in practice is with real data, you use a high account acquisition as your high quality reference. So what we do here is a conventional um, MLEM reconstruction on high quality data such that the output is good quality. Then we go back to our MAP-EM method that we just looked at briefly. And what we do is identify that the denoising stage is the one that we actually need to learn. So what we're doing here is learning a convolutional neural network, which will generate a prior image, which is like um, a penalty that it will be used for the EM update. And then what you do is uh, fuse together the EM update with that denoised version of the previous estimate. Um, so let's see what happens when you put an initial image in and you put noisy data in, you'll get a particular um, endpoint reconstruction at the last iteration. And what we do is, again, that AI methodology of using a mean square error loss, we say, well, we've got this, and what we desired was the high quality reference. And so you look at the discrepancy, take the gradient, back propagate it, and that's how you train up all of those convolutional neural networks that would be in every single one of those modules. Okay, uh, there's a, a concrete example of that methodology. Um, this is the method of Abifaz Moranian, published recently. Uh, this is for MMR data. Uh, this is a simulation in this case here. And you can just see here we've got the CNNs in parallel with the EM updates and the fusion steps. So I'll just move on quickly to give you example results from this. Um, this is for um, 
first of all showing you the high quality reference data, 30 minutes of MMR FDG data. And this is the conventional OSEM reconstruction if we only have two minutes of data. And then if we use uh, the methods I've just been describing, um, then you can see that the, the unrolled um, MAP-EM, here it's called FBSEM net, is delivering a reconstructed image quality that is very favorable compared to, um, or very much compares to the, the high quality reference and obviously outperforms the OSEM reconstruction. Also, I just point out here that a conventional post reconstruction UNET also does extremely well. Um, this is a quick slide to show where we're going with those kinds of methods. Um, I've been showing you unrolled PET methods there, uh, but we can also do the same for MR reconstruction. And so we can actually join together the two unrolled reconstructions, allowing MR to impact on every PET update and PET to update to impact on the MR updates as well. And this is with a view to achieving some kind of synergistic uh, reconstruction as both modalities are delivering reconstructed images. Okay, let's move on now to processing. Um, so here I'm showing some nice work from Dimitris Visvikis's uh, lab, uh, some work from his student Baptiste Laurent. And uh, here he just put in an emission sinogram and attenuation factor sinogram to train up a, a convolutional mapping, a UNET here, basically it's a convolutional encoder decoder with skip connections to predict the Monte Carlo based uh, scatter uh, sinogram. So because it was trained with simulated data where we know the ground truth, we know the ground truth scatter, therefore you can train up this UNET to deliver scatter from uh, particular inputs. Uh, this was done for various sized patients and for variable count levels. And you can see here, uh, it gets pretty good predictions compared to the actual Monte Carlo simulations. Um, and so this is a rapid way of generating uh, Monte Carlo quality scatter estimates, which unsurprisingly compare very well indeed uh, compared to standard single scatter methods. So here we're showing the case of um, MMR data for, for PSMA imaging. And with no scatter correction, we get uh, this image here, which is the black profile. With the conventional single scatter uh, method, we get the red profile. And with this deep learned scatter estimate, we get uh, the green profile shown in the middle there. So it looks like it's doing a convincingly good job. Won't have some of those um, you know, tail fitting issues that can arise with the single scatter methodology sometimes. Okay, so moving on then to the final example I want to cover, which is that of image analysis. Um, what we've got here is some work uh, from a student that I co-supervised, Jessica Hobson, and what she did was uh, train up a CNN um, in order to take a patch from a 3D FDG PET image, encode it via this convolutional encoder. We've got this familiar downsampling going on via the stride and generation of more and more feature maps in order to deliver uh, a latent space representation which can then uh, be trained up to predict um, three measures of image quality as assessed by a radiologist. In fact, it was assessed by um, Alexander Hammers, who assigned a global quality rating for each of these images, pattern recognition and diagnostic confidence. And so to explain a bit more, this is the kind of thing that we're doing with this. Um, this is like a, a full dose 244 uh, megabex um, slice of an FDG uh, reconstruction for which there are top scores for those three uh, quality measures. And then what we're doing is looking at lower dose reconstructions to see what the image quality is. And in fact, getting the CNN to tell us rapidly what the image quality is as assessed by a clinician. So here is this 10% and this is like half a percent dose. And uh, these are the corresponding uh, image quality measures that are assessed by a clinician. So let's see now in the next slide how well this convolutional encoder mapping with this fully connected layer at the end here, how well that can predict what a radiologist would say. So here, here are the results and to cut to the most interesting outcome here is that we actually get pretty good general agreement between um, a trained up CNN and the actual neurologists a reading of the quality of those scans. So to summarize then, I've gone through the PET pipeline and given examples of where AI can help uh, for post-processing using convolutional neural networks, uh, reconstruction, giving the example of Hagstrom for the direct method, and then the unrolled iterative methods where we put CNNs inside iterative reconstruction. I've covered data corrections, 
and then touched on image analysis. Thanks for listening.